Hand me my notebook over there. Grace and peace, church. The Lord is good. Say all the time. Say all the time. Say it with me. The Lord is good all the time. Say it with me all the time. How many of y'all believe that? How many of y'all really believe that? Okay. Father, we thank you today. We give you praise. We ask that you would help us today. Use my mind and my mouth to declare this truth. I pray today for your help. Help me today and help us today to understand that you are good all the time. And all the time, you are good. That's my prayer. I pray in Jesus' name. And the church said amen. I... uh. This morning, I want to really focus in on the statement that is on the board, on the screen. It is so vital that we understand this is a spiritual principle. It is a truth that if we don't understand, it will create in our lives a mess. Wrong thinking. Please write this down. Write this down somewhere. Always, can you say always, produces wrong speaking. That is a spiritual law. If you are thinking wrong, you will speak wrong. Did y'all hear what I just said? That is a spiritual law. The mouth always speaks what's in the heart or the mind. And if you are thinking wrong, you will speak wrong. Now, I know that statement doesn't grab you like it should until you read all of the book of Job. Did you hear what I just said? Until you read all of the book of what? It is a classical lesson in wrong thinking produces wrong speaking. Did y'all hear what I just said? The book of Job, please hear me. I know you were told to have the patience of Job, but I want to I wanna really open this up to you and let you know that we got the wrong lesson. The right lesson that we should have learned from the book of Job is that wrong thinking Y'all, please hear me. Wrong thinking always produces what? Wrong speaking. Now, I want you to allow me to share with you out of my, out of my study, out of my, out of my meditation, what God has shared with me so that you understand the main thing is to fix how you think. Think about your situation. Because if I can get you to understand that God is not behind your situation. Did y'all hear what I just said? That God is not the cause.
cause of your situation, then you will have the empowerment to really do something about your situation. If you think it is God who is pulling you through this muck and mire that you are currently experiencing, that God is somehow trying to teach you, some, <coughs> excuse me, some kind of lesson that you will never learn. If you think it's God, then you will be, you will be, you will be defenseless in taking a stand against it. Because after all, who would stand against God? Because if God is the one who is doing it to you for some mysterious purpose or reason, then you are just sitting there in limbo waiting for God to kind of clue you in on what's really going on. But the truth of the matter is, if you think it's God that is behind your turmoil, then you will not stand in faith and you will lose your confession. Are y'all hearing me? And you will eventually lay down for the enemy who is trying to run you over and he's in the background because, because you really don't understand where the source of the issue is. In the book of Job. Now remember, we're dealing with confession. In the book of Job, the book starts out talking about how wonderful Job is, that he is a righteous man, that he fears God, and he runs away from evil. The Bible calls Job a perfect man. And then there is, an, there is another scene that Job is not aware of. And that scene takes place in heaven. It says there's a day when the sons of God are gathered together and Satan. Are y'all hearing me? He comes with them. And the Lord says to Satan, where have you come from? And he says, from going to and fro in the earth, up and down in it. And then God says, have you considered my servant Job? That there is none like him in all the earth, all the land. He is an upright man. He, he fears me. He references me, and he stays away from evil. And then, of course, Satan says, is he serving you because you are so good to him? Are y'all catching this? He says, if you, if you move and take away all of his possessions, if you do that, then the, the one who you say loves you so much will turn his back on you. Now, I'm paraphrasing. And listen to what God says. God says, all that he has is in your hand. Only don't touch his body. Now, this is what I want you to get. God did no evil to Job. God made a statement which was a true statement because when you examine Job, Job's issue was he was motivated in all that he did when it came to his worship of God his motivation was fear. And I want to say to you this morning, if fear 
is your motivation for you trying to live right for God. That's a bad motivation because fear always brings with it torment. Did y'all hear what I just said? Fear hath torment. The Bible says perfected love cast out fear. A real genuine love for God is not motivated by what might happen bad in your life. But you are, you are doing what you're doing because you love God, you respect God, you understand that God is your source. Say amen. And, and listen to me. You're not afraid that God is going to one day turn on you for no apparent reason. Do y'all understand that? Job had no knowledge of what was taking place in heaven. All of a sudden, the next day, we see total destruction in Job's life. Now listen to me. The house, the houses destroyed, the kids killed, the cattle burnt up. All of Job's resources are destroyed at the hand of Satan. Now, did y'all hear me? But Job doesn't know it. And this is what Job says after they all come to him one after another and say, hey, listen, something happened and everything's gone now, Job. You got nothing left. And here's what Job said. What did I say on the board? Read it. What does it say? Here's what Job says. The Lord gave. Did y'all hear me? I said, did y'all hear me? Go to Job 121. Listen to what it says. The Lord gave. And the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Did y'all catch that? What did Job say? The Lord has what? Has taken it away. The Lord gave. And the Lord has what? Taking it away. Now, listen. Job was not privy to what was happening in heaven because he was thinking that the, the person that took away his substance was who? God. Say it with me, God. Yeah, he, he believed that. And so what does Job say in response to his turmoil? The Lord gave and the Lord has what? But it wasn't the Lord that took it away. Because Job was not aware of what was really happening. Did y'all hear me? Wrong thinking will always produce wrong speaking. I want you to get this because this really goes to the character of God and us understanding what kind of God we have and we serve. If you think that God is hot and cold, if you think that God is both good and bad, then, then you will never think right, which means you'll never what? Speak right. Do y'all, are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Okay, now I, wanna, I want you to grab a hold of this. <coughs> Job made a statement 
And when you examine the book of Job, please read it with this understanding. Wrong thinking produces what? Now, now I, need you, I need you to grab a hold of this. Fear is never to be our motivation. It always leads to thoughts and words that empower the enemy's activity in our lives. Let me say that again. Fear is never to be our motivation. Don't you do anything out of fear. It always leads to thoughts and words that empower Satan's activity in our lives. If Job had known what was really taking place, he could have laid the blame where it belonged. But because Job was unaware, Job attributed the calamity in his life to the hand of God. Did y'all hear what I just said? Now, Job said, the Lord gave and the Lord has taken away, which is a false statement. Please hear me. Everything in the Bible is truly stated. Did y'all hear what I just said? You need to write that statement down I just said. Everything in the Bible is truly stated. But that does not mean that everything in the Bible is a statement of truth. Did y'all hear what I just said? The question is, did Job say what he said? Yes, he did. And it is absolutely recorded that Job said what he said. But the statement is not a true statement. And you have got to discern what is a true statement versus what is stated truly. Did y'all hear what I just said? Do y'all understand that? Because that's so important. Because you will read things in your Bible that will give you the impression that God is a witch away God. And the truth of the matter is God is good what? All the time and all the time what? Now, y'all said it. Did y'all not say it? All right, let me give you some scriptures to back this up. Everybody go to John, 1 John chapter 1, verse 5. Everybody go to 1 John chapter 1, verse 5. And I promise you, I won't be long. Amen. First John chapter 1, verse 5. I said First John. I didn't say the gospel of John. I said First John, page 192 in my Bible. Amen. This then, are y'all with me? This then is the message which we have heard of him. Him meaning who? The Lord Jesus Christ. Listen to, and declare unto you that God is light. Now you know what that word means? Pure, good, just. That God is, is all of those things. That God is light. And in him is no darkness at all. Say at all. In God is no darkness. Now, listen to me. You know what the word darkness means? Evil, calamity, disaster, turmoil, trouble. Listen, God is light. God, say it with me. God is light. God is pure. God is holy. God is just. God is good. And in him, in God, is no darkness. Say no darkness. But listen, 
God is not with your way. God doesn't have one side today and another side tomorrow. God is good, what? And all the time, what? If you don't know that, you will think or you will be convinced by your circumstances that God is not on your side. And yet, God is always, say always. He's always on our side. Whether you know it <laughs> or not, God is what? He's always on our side. Now, 1 John 1, 5 says, God is light. In him is no darkness, what? Say at all. That means don't even think about it. All right? Now, please go to James chapter 1. God is wanting you to get well. Say amen. God is wanting you to be blessed. God is wanting the best for you. But the truth is, it's not up to God whether or not it manifests in your life. It's up to who? If it will be, it's up to what? Because here's the issue. Your words determine the condition of your life. But if you're thinking wrong, are y'all catching this? If you're thinking wrong, you're going to what? Speak wrong. Stay with me. Amen. And if you speak wrong, you're going to act wrong. Listen to me. James chapter 1, verse 13. Listen to what, let no man say when he is tempted that I'm tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil. Neither tempted he any man. You know why God can't be tempted or does not tempt any man with evil? Because there is no evil in God. You cannot give what you don't have. Say amen. There is no evil that ever comes from God. God is good. Say all the time and all the time, God is good. I promise you, God is not the source of your problem. And don't you ever think while you are going through that God is not aware and doing everything in his power to deliver you from your situation. Did y'all hear what I just said? I said, did y'all hear what I just said? Don't you think God is sitting on the sideline? doing absolutely nothing, watching you struggle. No, 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 no. God is always involved in your deliverance. Say amen. amen. All right, now go to James chapter 1, verse 17. Look at verse 17. Every good gift. Say it with me. Every what? Every what? And every perfect gift is from above. And cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. God will never change. Every good, say every good gift. Say every perfect gift come from God. Yeah. See, listen to me. When things enter into your life, if it's good, guess where it came from? God. Came from God. Don't get it twisted. Understand God can only give good because there's only good in God. How many of y'all understand that? Okay, now I want you to do me a favor. Go to Genesis. Chapter 1. 
I got about 10 more minutes. Please bear with me. Genesis chapter 1. Yes, thank you. This right here. Thank you. Are you at Genesis chapter 1? All right, I want to show you something, and then we're going to move on, and we're going to be done for the day. In the beginning, in this Genesis chapter, God recreates or reforms the heavens and the earth. Now, I want you to pay attention. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 3, write these all down. Please write these all down. Genesis chapter 1, verse 3. Genesis chapter 1, verse 6. Genesis chapter 1, verse 9. I've said this before. Genesis chapter 1, verse 11. Genesis chapter 1, verses 14 and 15. Genesis chapter 20, chapter 1, verse 20. Genesis chapter 1, verse 24. And Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. All of these scriptures... This is what it says. And God said. And God what? Said. said. And God what? Said. Now listen to this. Listen to this. Here's the revelation. Every time God said it, it was so. But here's the most important revelation. And after he saw what he said, Everything he said, it says it was good. Now, y'all, please grab hold of that. Because God never says anything that's not what? Good. Whenever God speaks, listen, here it is. God's word is always, here's a revelation, designed to produce good in your life. There is nothing God ever says for you that is not designed to produce good in your life. You might not want to hear it. <laughs> Say amen. You, you, might, you might choose to listen to the enemy's words versus the words of God, but I promise you everything God says to us is designed to produce good in our lives. Say amen. Now, let me, let me finish up by saying this. If you go and you read the book of Job, over and over again, Job attributes his calamity and condition to Almighty God. All through it, over and over again, Job blames God for the calamity. How many of y'all know that's true? If you don't, it's because you haven't read the book. Okay, you just thinking something, you need to read, say amen. Over and over again, Job attributes his calamity to God. After his, after his material possessions were taken away from him, there was another day that God and the angels gathered together and Lucifer came with him. And here go Lucifer. Listen, even though he doesn't curse you now, if you allow me to touch his body... He'll curse you to your face. And listen, listen to this carefully. God says, go ahead, but spare his life. Right. You, you can't kill him. Right. Now listen to me. Job never, please hear me, he never cursed God to his face. His wife came to him after he was sick, and she said, curse God and die. Whose words were she using? She was using the enemy's words. You got to be careful who's around you because not everybody is speaking 
God's word to you. Some folk are telling you exactly what Satan wants to happen in your life. Listen, listen. Here's what he said in response to her. Shall we not receive evil from God? Listen, we've received good. We ought to be able to deal with the what? Evil that comes from God. Wrong thinking. Say it with me. Wrong thinking produces what? See, who did he attribute it to? He attributed all of it to God. And he said, he said, this has come from God, and I got to deal with it. And if you think your condition is coming from God, you will never stand up and speak against it. Do you understand? I'm trying to get you to understand something. Now, listen to me carefully. I always laugh at this. Job never cursed God. But he cursed everything else. In Job chapter 3, verse 1, Job cursed the day he was born. Did y'all hear me? Job said, listen, listen to what Job said. Why didn't you kill me while I was yet in my mother's womb? Why would you birth me? And this is him talking to God. Why would you allow me to be born just to bring me to this place? He attributed Everything that was happening to him to the hand of God. Wrong thinking. Say wrong thinking. Produces what? Wrong speaking. Listen to me. Listen. Job said in chapter 3, verse 25 and 26, the thing which I greatly feared has come upon me. I was not in safety. I was not in safety. The thing which I greatly feared. What did I say about fear? Fear is a horrible motivation. If you fear, it will always open the door to guess who? Satan. Perfect love does what? Cast out what? Fear. Stop thinking that God is behind the negative. He is not. Did y'all hear what I just said? God is a good God. Now, in Genesis again, and then I'm closing. Listen to me carefully. And, and, and I have all these scriptures. I don't want to go through all of them. Uh, Job was maintaining his integrity. Job, all through the book, says, listen, I haven't done anything wrong to bring this about. I've lived a righteous life. And the truth is, he was correct. But it wasn't between him and God. That's what he didn't know. When you don't understand what's going on in your life, please hear me. If any man lack wisdom... Go to God, who is the source, and he'll give you the what? Answers. Say answers. Stop thinking wrong. Go to God and get the correct answer. Listen to me. If Job would have, instead of complained the whole time, and then, of course, his friends came and said, well, this is another. They were wrong in their thinking because they thought that only bad happens to bad people. And that's not true. This world is a falling world. Stuff happens, amen. And good people experience bad things at times. But that's no reason for them to lay down. Listen to me. Everybody here. You show me. You tell me the truth. Everybody here has had some difficult times in their life. If that's the truth, raise your hand. But listen to me. The good news is you can overcome everything that comes your way. But the way to overcome it 
is to understand that God is not the source of it. Y'all get that? Am I making this clear to y'all? God is not the source. How can you stand up and rebuke that mess that's in your life if you think somehow God is behind it? You won't do it. That's why every good and every perfect gift come from God. If it hadn't happened yet, don't blame God. Talk to God. Get some wisdom. Understand what you be needing, what you need to do in order to move this thing down the, 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 the road. Say amen. But don't sit there and start thinking that God doesn't want it to happen in your life because that's a lie from Satan. Because if you start thinking that away, you'll start speaking the wrong way. Wrong thinking does what? Produce wrong speaking. Listen, over and over again, like I said, Job made some horrible statements. But it's all because of wrong what? Thinking. Don't you fall into that same condition. If something is not going right, Go talk to God. Don't blame God. Talk to him. Get wisdom. And then you'll know what you need to do. Say amen. Last thing I want to say, because God's words are always designed to produce good. We are created in his image and his what? Say it again, his image and what? Therefore, our words that we sp produce or speak out of our mouths ought to be designed to produce what? Good. Now, listen to this, and then I'm done. Let no corrupt communication. Here we go. Let no what? Proceed out of your what? Your biggest issue is your mouth. Amen. Say it with me. My mouth is my issue. Listen, and, and then I'll be done. If you come home from work and you've had a tough day, don't bring your mouth into your home environment because the only thing your mouth is going to do is clog up and dam up the whole environment in your home. Your words, say my words, have power. If you walk in the house because you had a tough day and you cussing and you fussing, talk to me, talk to me, talk to me. All you are going to do is create a negative environment in your home. That's Satan. That's the devil. Do y'all understand what I'm talking about? How was your day? Well, hush your mouth if it wasn't no good. Just be quiet. <laughs> like somebody said, <laughs> if you ain't got nothing good to say, don't say what? When, when our words are released, our words have power. It can create harmony, peace, comfort. But if we get on that other side, you can wound, you can tear down, and then you wonder why when you go to bed at night, it's not a comfortable environment. Is because you've been speaking horrible words all over your situation all the way up to the bedtime, and then you want to tap on somebody and say, hey, what's happening? i tell you what's happening. Ain't nothing happening. That's what's happening. Y'all didn't hear that, did you? And let the church say amen. All right, come on, give an invitation.
Come on, let's settle down for a minute. 